Hi, in this video you will learn what a REST API is. REST is an abbreviation for representational state transfer and APIs that follow the REST standard are called REST APIs or RESTful APIs. Let's assume we are a user who wants to log into a website. Instead of directly communicating with the database, the communication happens through the API. A REST API handles requests over the HTTP protocol to access the data in a database. There are a lot of different HTTP methods. The most important ones are GET, PUT, POST and DELETE. These four methods are used to read, update, create and delete data. These requests are sent to a URL defined by the creator of the API, the so-called endpoint. A request consists of at least two, but often four components. The endpoint, which is the end of the part of the URL where you want to send the data to. Some endpoints can also have path parameters, for example the ID of a product, with which we can tell exactly which product in our webshop we want to change. We also need the HTTP method. Depending on the request, we can also send some data, which will be sent in the request body. In the request header, we can also send other parameters or data, such as a JSON web token, to verify our login. Now to our example. In our database, we have several shoes. If you want to see the shoes we can buy, we make a GET request to an endpoint. The API processes the request, gets the data from the database and sends the result back to us. What the API sends back to us is called a response. Besides the data, we also get HTTP status codes. Especially the first number tells us if everything was ok, if there was an error on the client side or if there was an error on the server side. If everything was successful, we get back the status code 200. For example, if we want to change the price of a product, we make a PUT request to the API endpoint that allows us to make a PUT request. In this case, we need to send information about the price of the product. Such data is sent in the so-called request body. This data is validated by the API, for example whether the price has the correct data type and then it's written to the database. If we want to create a new product, we make a POST request to an API endpoint. The data in the request body is also validated and then transferred to the database. If we want to delete the product, we send a delete request on an endpoint. Again the data is validated and then the product is removed from the database. But what do we do for example if you want to prevent users from simply deleting products from our database. You can secure API endpoints so that only certain people can execute certain HTTP methods. For example, we can create a separate login endpoint where we can send our username and password. If everything is correct, we are logged in. But the API does not store the login information, for example like in a session cookie. What we get back from the endpoint is a token. We send this token with every request in addition to the request body in a so-called request header. The request header is also read and validated. If the token is correct, the request operation in the request body is performed. If our token is not validated correctly, we get back a 403 error. The fact that an API does not store any session cookie or similar makes it so-called stateless. And this is from great importance in our today's cloud and container environment. If you want to scale our API, we run multiple instances of the same API in the cloud and then it doesn't matter if you make the request to an instance 1, 2 or 3. We always get the same result for the same input. If we had session cookies, we would have to make sure that all instances of the API are aware of the cookies, otherwise we would get different results back depending on which instance of the API the request goes to. I hope this little example showed you what REST APIs are, what purpose they serve and how they work in the real world. If you liked this video, don't forget to like and subscribe. Bye.